Welcome back, welcome back guys. We are in, what do we call this truck again? Snowman, oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Poor snowman. And uh, out here to do a wheel at start. And there it is, sitting up there in the bushes. But I thought we'd be able to drive out there. This is new, the new Highway 52 uh, here in Dade City. They about to find a way to drive around out there to it. It's nice hard ground, but can't drive across that uh, stuff they got made there. So we're gonna figure out how to drive out there. All right, we're off-roading in the two-wheel drive. That's why we got mud grips on the back old snowman. Stop, we got us icy from the jiffy. Drive out here to her. It's been a hot minute since we did some like true off-roading from yeah. where we start, you know. Out here in the boonies. Wow, so this thing look, has been sitting for a while. while. Yeah, so I looked at this thing about eight or nine months ago. They wanted to sell it. I wasn't really too interested. So I messaged him a couple days ago. I said, hey, can we go out and try to start this thing? He's like, yeah, no problem. <laughs> so here we are. Batteries are on this side of it. Let's get out and take a look at it. So this thing is absolutely massive, guys. This is a big daddy. It looks like it's got a Cummins in it. If I say big cam, I'm probably wrong. Someone will end up correcting me, but... I guess first things first, I need to find out where the batteries go. Oh, there's one battery box. By the way, it is a Kawasaki, is what brand this thing is. I don't know what model, but it says Kawasaki right there. There's no bucket on it. It looks like it had a, has a tree boom on it or something. I'm not quite sure what that really is. I used it for picking up something heavy. It is a big daddy. It's got a brand new tire on this side, Aaron. Yeah. Literally a brand new tire. You still got the nipples on it. Look at that. I'm sure there's another battery box right back here. You gotta watch out for some surprise, surprise bugs. There's a 95Z3. There's the other battery box. Definitely a big old Cummins in it. Got a PT pump. We can work with that. Not sure about a key or anything, but I know that we can put some power to the pump over there. Maybe we can get her to start. I don't know about getting the move, but we're going to get it started today. Up. I'll hold it that way. You got it? Yep. Tell you what, if this thing don't start, we're leaving these batteries in it. Because I ain't gonna have to pick them back out of here. Oh my lanta. Go in your home. Alright, so this one is negative. That's where they put the shut off because it's going straight to the uh, frame over there. It's positive, so. We'll have to yank the uh, positive doohickey, doohickey me jobby. <laughs> if they'll even start on 12 volts, who knows? We're about to find out, aren't we? Yep. All right, get this battery hooked up and see if it'll start on one. It might, you never know. These are uh, 1400 cranking amp batteries. I'll get my other jobby there and put it on the negative post off of this battery. Okay, so right here I've got my key and a key, key, my, <laughs> I can't even talk, starter, starter button, and basically we're just going to use this to bypass this key switch, and we'll end up putting power to the injection pump, and it should start, because there's no key in it. I'm sure we can probably find a universal key and maybe come back at a later date and see if we can get it to move, but for now we're going to see if we can get it to start. So, we've got our battery set in there, we've got our, our, uh, whatever you want to call this thing, on and off switch there. Well, we're not sure if the grounds are good or anything else, but for now, I'm going to find the starter on it. Looks like it's on the other side. Let's go to the other side. Yep, it's over here. Okay. 
What kind of bug is that? We don't get no sting wasps. You could call that thing your universal flathead replacement. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now what we're gonna do is use this, put hook one wire to hot and one wire to the starter solenoid and see if we can get it to at least click or spin over or get some kind of action out of it. I just gotta find the hot wire. Hopefully I don't get bit by some some strange animals and bugs. <sighs> So it looks like it's got some kind of a solenoid right here before the starter. There's all kinds of stuff going on in this thing. We may have to rake something up. I don't know what they got going on here. There is some serious rigotry going on. Yeah, because that's like a, another shutoff of some kind. Yeah, something's not right. We may have to set the other battery in there. And we'll see what else comes next. They call me Iron Man. Holy moly. Almost pinched my fat. Wouldn't it suck if you put it in the wrong direction? Yeah, now I gotta figure <laughs> out which one of these is positive, which one of these is negative next. So I broke up my test light because we're not getting any power anywhere and I found out this switch isn't operating like it should. So now we should be able to just put this ground right to the battery. Maybe we'll get something happening. Put this to that. Now we got something happening. Oh, that looks awesome. <laughs> All right, we're so close. We can just get this key to turn on or now yeah, we've got some good power flowing through the wires. Maybe we can get the starter to make a clicking noise or something. All right, there's that. Let's double check my uh, wiring we got here. Ground is where it's supposed to be. Let's see if our starter clicks. Probably not, but maybe. Oh, this is spooky. If something gets a hold of me, I'm not gonna be able to get out very fast. <laughs> I guess I should be this is definitely a little bit older machine because we had the battery terminals hooked up positive, negative, and the way I was testing off that side is I found the positive wire from that side and hooked it back to positive. But we weren't getting any power to the starter up here. So I swapped them around after, you know, a little deliberation figuring things out. And it turns out now that we've got my test light hooked to ground right here and I, and I touch it over here to the positive on the starter, it says overload. So now we know it's a 24 volt system. So it might piss off my little starter button here. But we're going to see what she'll do. That's not in gear, right? I don't know. I hope not. Where's my Tesla? Okay, so basically it's sending power to the starter, but none to the solenoid. So I've got to figure out how to... Um, Aaron, go over there to my box and you'll see some jumper wires. Grab me one, please, sir. Yeah. Oh, perfect, thank you. Got her hooked up. Got her hooked up. Oh, I guess we should check the oil right quick and do a few other little quick things, so we'll my wiring nightmare there <laughs> now where's the oil dipstick it looks like it's going to be right here in front of us she's a little low 
You know, how is it that every single thing we got to will to start has never got watered in almost? It's either ready to start almost perfect, or it's, it's just locked in every just cylinder. Water. It's just not going to start, <laughs> period. So, all right, there's that. Um, someone said we should check the air filter, so we'll walk around here and check that. I'm also going to have to use a little jumper wire. Was that the only one I've got? Front row. I may have to use a little jumper wire on the starter, on the... Uh, um, injection pump over here but well it should turn on because i've got the fuel pump is over here running so maybe it will work i don't know air filter box is up there highly doubt there's going to be anything in it but i can climb up here and get to it my big old tire well looks good to me <laughs> it's got an air filter <laughs> well, hopefully it don't run away that's all i'm going to say all right, let's go side, hit the starter button, see if she'll cheech. Five, four, four three, two, one. Will it start? <laughs> it's always so easy. <laughs> Why can't we ever get a difficult one? It is ridiculous. And I swear, it's always these big Cummins that just fire right up almost instantly. Now you're going to shut off. Remember the last one, the train we did, it wouldn't shut off. So I'm going to see if I can shut it off. Hang on, before you do, hit the throttle. It might run away. I should be able to hit it from inside. That's what I'm talking about. There might be a shut off in there too. I'm gonna retire after this one, I think. Holy crap. <laughs> oh my goodness, it moves. I never would have thought something this big and old would have started so quickly. Heck no, look how big this thing is. Oh, that's a successful will it start if I ever saw one. <sighs> so a little bit of the down low on this thing is it was actually brought to my attention by a fellow here in town that does construction work and uh, he said that he knew the project manager on putting the new road through here and they pretty much ended up with it and so I called him and he said he wanted to sell it but the most difficult thing about selling one of these big turds like this that doesn't run or move is getting them on a trailer and that gets expensive quick so we kind of talked about a price and I don't really need it but wouldn't it be cool to have down there buy a tractor.com at our shop at blue collar equipment just to have sitting in the field, people come by and see a ginormous tractor out there. Wouldn't that be cool for some kids? We get a lot of fans come by to see one of our wheel it starts sitting up there at the shop. That'd be just, I think that'd just be really cool. So we've got a semi that can move it. I don't know how much this thing weighs, probably a freaking lot. I've got some friends that have uh, drop deck trailers right here in town, the Blommels. They might could let us borrow one. So I'm gonna call the guy that owns it and see what he wants for us, see if we can make a deal. And maybe we can go borrow a trailer and later this week we can come pick this thing up bring it to the shop 
And that's gonna be a whole feat in itself because look at these tires. These things are freaking huge. And I don't even know how to put air in them. <laughs> the other one over there is off the rim. So that's gonna take a lot of starting fluid to get that thing up and going, so. That'll be a video in itself. A lot, oh my goodness. So I can't believe it freaking moved. I'm just mind blown because these things do have like an, kind of like an electronic transmission in them. So pretty freaking crazy, but yeah. Um, it did spring a little bit of a hydraulic leak. We are going to take care of that mess right there uh, before we leave. But I do need to find out which hose is busted because we can make hydraulic hoses at our shop. And um, then maybe we can come back out and fix the hose and actually drive it on a trailer, get tires there and stuff like that. Let us know in the comments what you guys think we should do. Should we bring it back home and park around the field up there at the shop? I don't know what we should do. That would be cool though, I think. What do you think? Okay. Also, our Will It Start key tags are back in stock. <laughs> I don't have any of those, maybe I'll throw it up on the screen or something, but Will It Start key tags are back in stock at the Bruce Wilson Shop website. Go check it out. We've got some really cool merch coming, guys. Hope you enjoyed this Will It Start video, and uh, make sure you smash that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe if you're not already subscribed, guys. We'll catch you later. We'll see ya. I really don't know how to put this thing in to perspective for you guys. It looks kind of small on the screen, but... I didn't want to end the video off without you guys seeing just how big this thing is. It is a massive loader. Well, for our area, I'm sure there are bigger bigger loaders and stuff like that, but look how big this, I probably shouldn't be walking under here, how big this cylinder is to my hand. Just a big daddy, big rear end. These tires are huge. That tire over there on that side is brand new. They are a 29.5, 25, 22 ply. Absolutely, just crazy big. Literally, we should drop. We need to drive Snowman up here next to us so people can see just how big it is. We're just about to pull this thing over here so we can see how large this tractor is compared to the truck. Whoops! <laughs> I gotta rip something underneath the truck. That was a Florida endangered oak tree, folks. thing is huge i've never driven one so big there's gonna be so many she said's in this video i can already see it <laughs> wow snowman and will it start crew have done it again i swear no one can top our will it starts nope not at all all right we're done talking guys hope you enjoyed it let's see if we can get this thing bought and uh bring it home so what are you doing before we leave, I'm gonna let the boom down because it's kind of a, a rural area, but there are some beautiful houses and stuff like that. And I don't want any kids to come out here and be playing in here and that be up and someone get hurt. So we'll put it down. That will smash somebody's head. That'll smash somebody's car. That too. <laughs> Let's get out of here.